This is a Packard Bell RPC 13R, as in, I guess, record player combination 13R. And there's a previous video on this, so this will be video part two. And suddenly the, the, the previous video has started to get a lot of comments, and I've noticed that's kind of the way Google will Google or YouTube works, where you'll have a video that just kind of sits there that your subscribers view, and then Google will decide it's time to make this a recommended video, so let's drive it viral. So it suddenly started to get a lot of, of uh, viewing. And I actually pulled this unit back out because I, I have a vacant house that I have to paint. It's a rather large house and I kind of like to jam to music while I'm painting because painting is pretty monotonous and boring and mind-numbing. So I pulled this out and in previous video you can kind of if you want to look that up you can see the operation but today I brought it back here to the house and lubricated all the controls and it was it was a bit of a pain to get this thing apart um, there's two screws in the front two screws in the back that that come up from the bottom and to get to them you have to get up into here which is about an inch and a half slot so anyway I, I pulled this out and I, I took it apart and uh, did the control cleaner thing on all the pots and that smoothened the pots this had the dirtiest pots I've ever seen And this thing's pretty neat because it's got, this is pre-multiplex. You can watch this in the first video. It has separate, separate AM and FM tuners so you can listen to AM in one channel and FM in the other channel before they had stereo. It simulcast stuff like that. But anyway, each channel has got the top and then the bottom. And in the previous video, we went over that something wrong in the amp that's causing one channel to and we can prove this So it's, you know, it's not coming out of the receiver like that. And I'm 99% sure it's a bias issue on the 12AX7 driver, and I'll show you why. Pull this out and we'll let it cool off for a second. Someone made a comment about something about a recap. Well, Packard Bell doesn't use anything except disc caps, so the odds of it there are no paper caps in this whole thing, none at all. Uh, and the electrolytics in Packard Bell, I don't think I've ever seen one go bad. Okay, check this out as this tube warms up.
I'll do that again. And I tried changing the, swapping the two tubes and it does the same thing. Probably an open resistor or something in the biasing. This is the preamp slash phase inverter. It uses four 6BQ5s. And this thing will shake the house, this stereo. So here we go. Okay, listen as it warms up and then it... So anyway, there's a biasing issue uh, in the front end of that amp. And I actually have another one of those amps somewhere. I could just swap it, but I'd rather fix it. It's probably just a resistor. Uh, the turntable is frozen solid. Um, I'm sure it just needs new grease. And when I say frozen solid, I mean... So, I'm not going to be using the turntable. I'm not going to restore the turntable. What I'm probably going to do with this is uh, bring my DirecTV receiver over here and plug the line out from the DirecTV receiver into the tape. And there's a lot of good um, kind of like XM radio channel music channels that just play music because when you're painting you don't want to have to worry about records you know or the radio or commercials or anything like that so this house has a satellite receiver on the roof I can just throw my box in here and plug it into this and have non-stop compressed low bitrate music these uh, these wings swing up and then the speakers have these clips they snap on they snap on here so it becomes like a uh, a combo unit I got this at a estate sale for 25 bucks a few years ago so All right, I'll pull the amp and we'll get into that a little bit later. Okay, here's the amp. And I found something else when I pulled this out. Which is an asbestos heat pad that's falling apart. And I just wanted to mention that I have been noticing more and more stuff I come across with these asbestos this is just raw asbestos right here. More and more stuff, especially the old Zenith radios. You really have to watch the old Zenith radios. They'll have a asbestos pad between the wood and the chassis. And it's best to get this out as quick as possible. Get a high speed grinder and a cocaine straw and suck this up into your lungs as fast as you can because leaving it in the in the unit is just a total waste you want to ingest this asbestos as quickly as possible for maximum effect actually I would have to say I stand corrected on the disc cap thing the receiver was all disc caps but this has some of these blue um, I think they're like paper mica. They're like the the RCA version of the red drop. And I would bet that that's the one leaking right there because that's the one that isolates the input from the grid. And probably what's happening is uh, it's just pulling this voltage that's on the bias voltage, just pulling it to zero. Or maybe it's a maybe it's applying voltage. 
I don't know, they're easy enough to check. Depends. I wonder if there's voltage coming out of the receiver. I think there should be zero volts. There's a 470, 470 to ground right there. Could be any one of these resistors is open. Okay, let's see how long it takes to diagnose this. I got it powered up. I had to bypass the leads that go up to the switch. We have two identical sides here, so it should be pretty easy to diagnose this just by comparing voltages. The first thing I want to do is I want to check the voltages on the grids of the 6BQ5s because if one of these is leaky it'll eliminate those tubes real quick. Let's go down to uh, 4 volts. That one looks good. That one looks good. That one looks good. And that one looks good. So our grids are all zero. Our cathode voltage, all cathodes are tied together. Then this is the biasing resistor. The filter cap, the cathode bypass cap, this should be around 12 volts or so. Let's see what we got here. 13.8, that looks good. Okay, let's check our... Start with this guy here. 0.5, negative 0.5 there. Negative 0.6. And here's zero volts, so nothing wrong with that. Okay, let's check our voltages here. So, we'll just go around. 345 volts there. 242 volts there. Gee, I think there's something going on there that's not right. This one here is 100 volts higher. That's the plate of this. Minus 0.4 there, 102.5 there. Three hundred and fifty-three here, then we got a gray, red, yellow. So it's eight hundred and twenty K. So same thing here. Three hundred and fifty-three volts there. 0.4 volts here. Gee, do you think that's open? You think that's open? Or you think this disk capacitor here is shorted, loading it down? Because see, it comes around. I bet that 820K is open. Let's do, our, let's do the rest of our voltages here. Let's see what we got here. Zero. That's basically it. We got an open 820K right there. Closest thing I could find is a 910, which is more than adequate for this. So let's just measure the resistance of this. On the 40 meg scale, it's reading nothing. It's reading wide open. And it's been discharging for about 15 minutes. Let's measure this one. Nine hundred and eleven. Just for the fun of it, let's measure the other eight twenty that's right here. Come on. Ha! 
<laughs> this one measures 960 and it's supposed to be 820 so that one's pretty high so let's uh, let's get this thing out of here actually you know what I'm gonna do this is what I usually do when I don't have the exact part on hand something close enough let's measure it with it clipped out wide open. Usually what I'll do if I don't have an identical replacement part is I'll just clip one lead out like this and leave it um, leave it kind of hanging here and then put the new one just temporarily kind of J-hook the new one in there that way uh, when I do get the new part it's easy to see exactly right where it goes or if I don't ever get around to doing it then maybe the next donor We'll, um, we'll see that and say, oh, well, that's supposed to be an 820, not a 910. This probably has those crappy resistors in it. It probably needs all new resistors. And this is what I mean by just the 910 is in there and the 820 is just kind of hanging here. It won't, it won't do anything. And even if it does touch something, it's open. So let's, uh, Let's do some voltage comparisons. We'll start here. This one was like 345 before. This is the plate because there was no bias on it. It was just floating up. So 236. And let's check that on this side here. 237. Let's check our 910. 108. Let's check the 910 on this side. See, I mean the 820 or 910 103 it's gonna vary a few volts the tubes are obviously different so that's it that fixed it we don't even have to put it in and listen to it because we can let's see so let's just see this this thing that's hanging here All right so let's measure this side still soldered on 108 volts this side, the side that's floating, 3.2 volts. So that thing is just as wide open as open can get. So that's it. That's it's going to work good now. Bolt channels are going to perform evenly. So there's the channel that was not working before. And here and see. Uh, you know what? I might have that unplugged. I might, I might unplug the phone out when I. Yeah, I think I did when I. I want to see if the, there's any activity from that needle and cartridge. Huh, well it hums a lot. Well, that would expect that. That would explain that. Ralph's, you'll find lots of gift ideas right where you shop for your groceries. Plus gift cards, hundreds to choose from. Now, what I might do with this, if I feel so inclined, is I have a bunch of um, multiplex decoder add-ons made by Sylvania brand new in the box and this is all set up to have multiplex 
installed. It has the, I don't know if you'll be able to see it here, but it has the multiplex output and then the multiplex input. Uh, I guess this thing was made right on the edge when they were still trying to figure out what stereo decoder to go with. I don't know. But, um, yeah. And the other thing this will do is it will do AM in one channel and FM in the other channel. That's displayed in the previous video. I can't do that right now because when I pulled this out to clean the controls, the, the wire from the tuning, from the uh, ferrite rod antenna that connects to the tuning capacitor broke off and I don't have a soldering iron here but it does work. This is reverb. Tu casa Júpiter y Venus y esa alineación celeste te va a brindar una comodidad y mucha tranquilidad económica. Felicitaciones. Sé que muchos realizaron el ritual de la prosperidad. Ahora lo que le recomiendo es ahorrar con el amor. Nunca antes como ahora la felicidad te había invadido totalmente. Valora lo que tienes, Sagitario. Esta semana debes aprovecharla al máximo, expresando todas tus ideas a tu socio para llevar a cabo el proyecto que traes en mente. Revisa el socio todos los documentos antes de firmar. En el amor, la fidelidad ha estado a prueba y recibirás la recompensa que te mereces. That's uh, a spring reverb, spring reverb unit. Guess it gives you like simulated wood grain stereo when it works right. Kind of have to be careful. This thing is super loud, and I don't want to attract a bunch of attention. Like, oh, he's got some, you know, fifty thousand dollar stereo system. We need to go steal. Look at how rock solid the AFC is on this thing. <laughs> I mean, look at that. Let me turn it off. Let's see.
when you when the AFC is that rock solid, you can tell the alignment is just superb. Of that I got a date with an asbestos pad I need to get to. In fact, cleaning out the uh, the um, garage here, the previous tenant left me a couple EOLers. I found a golf club and this. So let's put them together and see what we come up with. I think I missed. Let's see here. into the line. I think, I think it's best to use the golf club kind of like this. Yeah, that'll work. What have we got in here? We got an STK 419. <laughs>
is Sierra Miss. So, and you know what we're supposed to do with a whole wall? End of the line for an Iowa high power something. Continuing on with the vacant rental insanity, uh, I found this cleaning out the garage up under the water heater uh, in a pile of debris. And I, we, I remember borrowing this album from the public library in the mid 80s, the vinyl copy of this, and we wore it out for the week or ten days I was allowed to have it. And of course I have the MP3s of this. But uh, I thought we'd check this out and have a listen because this is probably one of the better rock albums. The compact disc digital audio system offers the best performance sound reproduction on a small convenient disc. Its remarkable performance is the result of a unique combination of digital storage and laser optics. For best results, you should apply the same care in storing and handling a compact disc as you would to conventional records. No cleaning is necessary. The compact disc is always held by its edges and is replaced directly in the case after playing. If the compact disc becomes soiled by fingerprints, dust or dirt, it can be wiped. Always use a straight line from the center to the edge with a clean lint-free rag. Soft dry cloth. Never use a solvent or abrasive cleaner to clean the disc. You follow these suggestions, the compact disc will provide a lifetime of listening enjoyment. Oh, look at this, a fan club. Remember those? Does Lady Gaga have a fan club? Actually, she probably does. I know I know Kesha does. She likes the little kids to mail her their baby teeth. Compact disc. Totally outdated EOL, nobody wants anything to do with it anymore. And then I, I also thought it was interesting because I came in and I was looking at these trending things on on Yahoo. I always just glance at this. And of course, we still got cyber, the cyber spend your money thing going on. But uh, David Lee Roth and Van Halen are the number one and number three things going on going on here. So I pop this in the computer and sure enough it plays.
This was a big radio hit. What do you think the teacher's gonna look like this year? radio hit still is anyway another dead format pretty much